Hi, welcome back. In this video, let's talk about API Gateway service proxies and when you should consider using them. But first, a quick primer, since service proxies is not a commonly used feature, you have probably used API Gateway with Lambda by now, where in the API Gateway console, if you look at the integration request, you see the integration type being Lambda function, and it points at the function called Step Functions Guide Dev Handler in this case. But notice that there is an option for AWS service in the integration type. And if you choose that, then you can choose from a list of over 100 AWS services that you can proxy through API Gateway so that you bypass a compute layer such as a Lambda function and go straight from a HTTP request to the underlying AWS service. So instead of API Gateway calling a Lambda function, which then publishes a message to a SNS topic, API Gateway will call SNS publish directly. And since you're removing Lambda from the equation here, you also remove the occasional latency spikes from Lambda co starts, which, as we already discussed at length in the performance chapter, there are plenty of other ways to mitigate the effect of co starts. And generally speaking, the best way is to optimize the function so that even co starts fall within acceptable latency range. However, that might not be sufficient. If you have a long core chain of API gateway and Lambda functions, so that when co starts stack up, then you still have a problem, even if individually the co start latency is within your SLA. For cases like this, you're absolutely right to consider other approaches, such as provisioned concurrency or API gateway service proxies. And by removing Lambda, you also remove any costs related to them. But keep in mind that. API Gateway is likely to be much more expensive than Lambda in this architecture, so you need to carefully weigh this decision against what you lose in the process, which we will get onto shortly. So in summary, you should consider service proxies when you're concerned about cold starts and have exhausted other strategies to mitigate them. But it's predicated on that your function does absolutely nothing besides calling some AWS service and returning the response. In terms of the things you will trade off, you lose all the logging from your function, where we often add contextual information about the request, such as correlation IDs. We also lose any error handling we might want to do otherwise, such as logging a helpful error message, or perhaps to employ some fallback strategy to return some previously cached response, or even a default response, in the event that the primary data store is unavailable. In most cases, Returning stale data is better than returning no data and helps you degrade the user experience gracefully. And also, a lot of the distributed tracing tools won't work here, at least all the third party tools that we will look at in the observability chapter. And finally, if you want to run chaos experiments and inject latency or error into the system, then you won't be able to do that when you take out the Lambda functions, because the tools we have right now performs failure injection in your application code. But this is probably not your top priority right now, as it's not something that many of you are looking at yet. So these are the things that you trade off when you use service proxies, but there are also other challenges with setting them up. For example, you have to tell the service what actions to perform, and you also have to set the right IAM policy as well. All this requires a lot of know-how, especially as many of these services have caveats and small differences in the way you have to integrate with them. It can be confusing, even to folks who work with API Gateway on a daily basis. Have a read of this thread. There are some useful tidbits about some of the ways you can integrate API Gateway with different services. And another hurdle to using service proxies is that you're likely going to write some VTL at some point, which is not everybody's cup of tea, and they're hard to test. Most people myself included, end up iterating and testing in the API Gateway console until we find what works and then copy into our source code. There is this one project that makes API Gateway mapping templates testable, but it's not been updated for four years, so it's probably missing a few things. If you're using the serverless framework, your best bet is this plugin, which I've been working on with Takahiro Horike and Eris Roka. It lets you configure service proxies to SQS just like this, which is very straightforward. And similarly, you can set up a proxy to SNS like this. In total, 
five services that are supported right now and you can customize the request template for most of them and configure cross origin access and that's all i have to say about api gateway service proxies for now we'll talk more about it in the cost chapter i will see you in the next lesson